I'm not really sure what the lighting looks like right now. I low-key don't care because I kind of wanted this like more cozy, warm vibe for this video. I'm literally in my pajamas. I took my shower for the night, so my face is completely bare, no makeup. And I just wanted to film this cozy little sit-down chit-chat with y'all. If you've read the title, then we're basically going to be talking about the pressures behind being a content creator or creative in general, <clears throat> specific to this YouTube space. Uh, even more specific to this booktube space and i'm also going to talk about just the social media pressures in general that each of us face so my idea of this video kind of started a few days ago over the weekend when essentially i was going through all my youtube um subscriptions with the intent of unsubscribing to the people that I just feel that their content no longer serves me in the sense that it is not enriching my life in any way and I just don't feel that I need to be consuming their content for whatever reason. Well, what I found was quite shocking and actually very heartbreaking. While going through my my subscriptions and you guys I had so many I found so many booktubers who I'd subscribed to you know years ago back when I first started making videos on this channel and shortly afterwards that no longer make videos anymore I mean I found channels that were defunct I found channels where people had deleted all of their videos I found channels where it would say last video four years ago three years ago five years ago and it completely broke my heart. I actually found a video from Baz Pierce. I don't know if you guys remember him. I used to love his videos. And I low-key wondered where he went. But because I don't really watch booktube videos anymore, really, I didn't even realize that he was gone. And he'd made a goodbye video two or three years ago, pretty much saying goodbye to the space. And he'd been making videos for so many years. And he was, in a way, in a place in his life where he felt he had outgrown the community, outgrown, well, I shouldn't say outgrown the community, but he'd outgrown making videos. And it was no longer creative, creatively fulfilling to him. It no longer was something that he really wanted to do. So he just felt that, you know, he'd gotten some, some popularity and some viral videos. So he was like, I'm going out on top. This is a good place to stop. I'm out. I also found a lot of black booktubers who'd given up. You know, they made a couple videos. They had, you know, a couple hundred subscribers. Some maybe even a couple thousand. And they just weren't making videos anymore. And it broke my heart. I saw, you know, girls, especially black women, young black girls, who started channels and they deleted all their videos. Maybe they only had two, three hundred subscribers. And it would say this channel has no videos and as i looked at the faces and clicked on the accounts i started to remember all of these creators and i started to remember how much they enriched my life in a time when i desperately needed needed it um i found booktube in a very very dark time in my life it was around 2011 2012 i was living in new york city in Harlem I was unemployed running a blog that made little to no money literally living on like five dollars a day you guys think I'm exaggerating I am NOT exaggerating living on like five to ten dollars a day if that eating like canned food for food from the dollar store getting you know using food stamps I was spiritually fulfilled and enriched in my my spiritual, emotional, and mental life, but my actual life was very barren and, and very just bare. I didn't have a lot, and a lot of times I depended upon the kindness of family, friends, even strangers at times. And it was in a time in my life where I really didn't know 
what to do with my life. I knew I wanted to write, but I was scared. I didn't know where to start. You know, I'd, I'd just come out of college where I'd spent four years learning how to be an actor, only to realize that I had no interest in trying for the pinnacle of acting. I had no interest in, you know, trying to be a Hollywood actress in any way, shape, or form. I didn't start acting for the fame or the accolades or the attention or the recognition. I started acting for the art of it all because I fell in love with a play that I did my senior year of high school that really spoke on really important issues and I realized that this art form was a way to touch people and speak to people and change the world and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to use my art to speak to people, to move people because so many people came up to me after the shows that we did and spoke to me about how much the character, my character touched them, how much you know, the subject matter really opened up their eyes and moved them and really changed them in some way. And so that's why I decided to pursue acting for my life's work. Coming out of school, I, I was at a place where I hit a wall and I detested acting um, because I didn't like the aims of it, you know? I wasn't in it for the accolades, for the money, for the fame, as I've stated before. And that's all people seem to be talking about. That's all people seem to be interested in after school. And I did do some shows after school and I wrote some things. I understood I could have gone down a different path. I could have, you know, pursued more theater and playwriting and off-Broadway work. And I understand all of that. But I am the kind of person where I'm very all or nothing. I'm learning how to find balance in my decisions and, and the things that I want to do and, and where I want to place my energy creatively. But I'm very all or nothing. So I completely just removed myself from that space and I removed myself from that world. I took so many steps back and just completely left. So I was in a place where everything was changing in my life. I wasn't depressed, but it was definitely a dark time, a time of, a time of indecision, of confusion, but clarity at the same time. I was going through a spiritual awakening and a mental awakening but my surroundings were very dark. So that's when I found booktube and it saved me in so many ways. Watching these booktubers gave me so much joy. It brought, you know, a couple minutes, sometimes a couple hours of just happiness to my day of light, of, of complete just escape. And it started to plant the seed of me wanting to do YouTube even back then. I didn't know if I wanted to do beauty videos because I was also an avid watcher of beauty videos and Back then they called them beauty gurus. But once I found booktube, I was like, this is it. I say all that to say, seeing the sheer number of creators, fellow book lovers and readers like you and I, who had left this space for whatever reason, was very disconcerting and very heartbreaking. I don't know each and every one of their reasons for leaving, but I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine that some of their reasoning, especially for the black women that I found their channels, didn't have to do with low viewership, lack of support, lack of engagement, right? And that was back then, three, four years ago. Now we have the YouTube algorithm to contend with. And it seems that if you're not pumping out the typical, very commercial, highly glossed over videos, like wrap ups, TBRs and hauls, and now we have reading vlogs to add to the list, that your views are just gonna be low. Unless you're really talking about controversial topics. Negativity sells. People love drama, right? People love the tea. People want to spill the tea, know the tea, listen to the tea, indulge in the tea. Cancel culture is rampant. People love dragging, right? So unless you're engaging on that ne negative frequency, which I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I've engaged with it because negativity is necessary sometimes. Criticism and critique is important for any platform 
and it's important to question things right but from what I've observed unless something is dramatic and in a negative light you're also not gonna get the views so as a content creator what do you do I'm asking you guys that's not to say that there are people in this community that have built a large platform and a strong platform from just being themselves, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying that people are not here successfully doing their own thing, being in their own lane, and successfully carving out a path for themselves and people are along for the ride and they're happy to be along for the ride. I'm not saying that there aren't authentic creators on this platform that are truly doing what they love and it's clear that they're not adhering to some type of formula or phoning something in or being fake. They come across as very genuine, their personalities are very personable and relatable, and we enjoy watching them. I'm not saying that that's not true, right? It's not an either or type of thing. And there have been so many discussions in our community about viewership, about subscriber count, about, you know, black content creators, black booktubers not getting the views. And now I see other communities standing up. You know, I see the Asian booktubers and the Indian booktubers and the, the Latina and Latino booktubers. I see it all. And we've started a conversation that is very important about people of color on this platform in this community. And I see solutions being made. I see people's channels taking off. I see people doing innovative and very creative things and talking about books that are important. And I'm not saying none of, like any of these things aren't happening, they are. But once again, it's not an either or situation. But what for me, looking at those content creators, those booktubers who left, what it did for me is it really started me thinking about myself and my place in this community and my desire to continue making booktube videos my desire to continue in this space another thing well two other things that have added to my introspection on this topic the dogs here someone you guys know it wouldn't be one of my videos if the dogs weren't going crazy at some point they've been very quiet i spoke too soon but the first thing is i was having a conversation with Brittany from melon and eclectic about subscriber count and engagement right now there's been a long ongoing conversation on book twitter about subscriber count in the sense that a lot of smaller creators have been speaking out i'm not going to say whining i'm going to be more empathetic and understanding so i will say speaking out right a lot of smaller creators have been speaking out about their lack of subscriber count and their lack of growth right now it's interesting because i actually went and checked out a lot of these i'm not i'm not putting anybody on blast but before i make a video i like to do my research so i went and i checked out a lot of these smaller creators channels and kind of trying to understand what they were talking about and yes okay a lot of them have like 1,000 subscribers 2,000 but a lot of them also have 8,000 6,000 10,000 4,000 right that's not a small thing to them their issue is they're not growing at the rate as fill in the blank here right they're comparing themselves to someone else to an idea of what they think they deserve right it's not that they're not growing they're not growing at the rate they feel they should be maybe it's true maybe it's not but as we like to say comparison is the thief of joy and they're watching someone else they're watching another creator or other creators and they're seeing their growth and their success and their subscriber accounts double or triple in a short amount of time and they're comparing themselves to that level of success and growth and that pattern of channels really taking off and they're wondering why they're not experiencing the same on their channel on their platform they're trying to figure out why they're not worthy of the subscri subscriber count as xyz whether we want to admit it or not that's what it boils down to okay that's that's just facts y'all that's what it is so while there are some smaller creators that really do deserve more subscribers and you guys the youtube algorithm has changed and it will change again with these new copa copa copra whatever i'm probably saying it wrong laws that are coming down the down the pipe if you don't know about it do some research this ain't the video for that but what's interesting to me is that 
these smaller creators have been so vocal about this that it's starting to rub people the wrong way, right? Especially creators who have managed to grow exponentially in a short period of time. Maybe they had a video that went viral, as viral as a video can go in our small community. You know, maybe something that they spoke about really just caught on, ran out of memory there, gravitated people to their channel, right? And people discovered that they love their personality, they love their content, they love what they have to say, and they subscribed. So, going back to Brittany and I's conversation, she's doing Vlogmas. So she's been putting up a video every single day. And for a lot of smaller creators, putting up a video daily, um, typically at the, around the same time every day, for a, sust a, a suspended period of time, has proven to really increase engagement, subscriber count, views, because what happens is that YouTube starts to notice that you are putting out content very consistently, and so they start recommending your videos to people who are actively watching the platform, right? Especially at around the same time every day. So I questioned her, out of curiosity, if her consistency thus far, we are only 11 days into the month, had made any sort of impact on her channel thus far. And she told me that it really hadn't, but at the same time she hadn't kept up with the everyday posting due to technical difficulties. So she couldn't really say either way if it was going to be successful or not until she finished out the month and hopefully got back on schedule and continued to consistently post. But she did say that it hadn't really helped in terms of engagement or subscriber count. And I thought that was interesting. But again, we're going to allow her to continue and finish out and I'll go back to her for more data. But I have noticed, especially with newer booktubers that come on the platform, they tend to post very, very, very regularly, if not every day, at least every three to four days. And it, ooh, excuse me. And it definitely does help their engagement. It definitely does help YouTube kind of push their videos and recommend their videos because whenever I log on, I see their videos and it helps them to gain an, audi uh, gain an audience because people know to expect a video from them every day pretty much around the same time. So it does help their subscriber account and if you know a creator is able to sustain that level of consistency for at least a few months it can really make a huge difference. So then we start to question how much work is being put into getting the subscribers you deserve, right? And if hard work equals the results of your hard work, meaning what you feel you deserve for the amount of work that you put in. Now, bringing this back full circle to what I was talking about in regards to myself and how I was contemplating things about my platform. So the first thing was the conversation about Brittany, or rather the second thing. The third and final thing was just the fact that we are wrapping up this decade, right? In just a matter of weeks, we will be entering an entirely new decade and it, you know, it definitely causes introspection. It definitely causes you to kind of review the past 10 years of your life, see how far you've come, see what choices and decisions you've made, you know, where those choices and decisions have brought you, the consequences of those, you know, kind of weighing regrets and sort of trying to forge a path and a plan of action for the next decade moving forward. At least it has for me. And it's really made me think about my presence online and my consumption of information via social media more specifically Instagram I don't really use Facebook I avoid Twitter like the plague I tried I failed to become a Twitter person and I don't really use snapchat any longer and I just joined TikTok, which we will discuss much later but it really has made me sort of start to think about my engagement with this community, my place here on booktube, and also and also how I plan to utilize my use of social media, more specifically Instagram and YouTube moving forward, moving into 2020, moving into this new decade. So if you notice a different angle, my camera died. Well, it didn't die, but I really got to get a new camera. Whenever the internal temperature runs too hot, it just shuts off which is really annoying. Because you guys know I love the long, to make the longer discussion videos. Anywho, 
let's see if I can get my train of thought back on track. So, yes, so I've been thinking about all of these things and one of the biggest revelations I had is the fact that, oh, and I came back with dessert. Ice cream, so delicious, dairy-free salted caramel cluster with cashew milk, cashew milk. It is non-dairy and it is absolutely delicious. If you've never tried it, go try it, it's so good. So, the biggest revelation I had from all of these contemplative thoughts and everything kind of culminating together, right? Is the fact that somewhere along the, along the way, I've lost my creativity and I've lost my desire to be creative. All my life, I've been a creative person. I have always enjoyed making things. I've always enjoyed being artistic and cultivating my gifts and my talents. I've loved writing, singing, dancing, acting. I used to make jewelry. I used to write plays. I used to make dolls. I used to make things, right? I used to really enjoy making things and pouring out my creativity in that way. Even things like puzzles and building things, you know? I used to enjoy doing all of those things. Anything creative that I could do with my own hands and build and make and, you know, have something come together that wasn't there before. I've always enjoyed doing those types of things. Photography even, I got really into photography at one time. And it was really startling and as equally heartbreaking as finding all those creators who had left booktube to discover that I had lost my will to create, my well of creativity had completely run dry, and I was being distracted. And this is where a discussion of social media comes in. And my decision to have a nearly offline year. Now, the reason I say nearly is because I really do enjoy YouTube. I utilize it in a lot of different ways. It's an outlet. It's for me to not only post videos, but watch videos that I feel like I learn a lot from and a lot of content creators that I get a lot from mentally, emotionally, sometimes even spiritually. So I don't think I'd be able to completely go off of YouTube in the sense that I wouldn't be able to watch YouTube for a whole year, but my watch time will be limited. But I'm completely going to stop engaging as I have so heavily with Instagram. And yeah, it's really Instagram because I don't use Facebook. I don't like Facebook. I just, Facebook gives me a very creepy feeling. It's not normal for me to know the ins and outs, supposedly, right? Because it's everyone's highlight reel. All social media is. But it's not, I don't feel that comfortable knowing so much about people who I haven't spoken to since high school, you know? For me, high school was over 10 years ago. It'll be 15 years very soon here. And I'm not young, you guys. I look young, but I ain't that young. And it's really creepy to me to know, you know, their children's names and their children's faces. If I can't pick up the phone and call you, if we're not engaging in the comments, if I haven't spoken to you in over a decade. I feel very uncomfortable knowing so much about your life. I feel very uncomfortable knowing your children's names, their schools, your activities. I just, I don't like it. Facebook th to me feels like a CIA ops, <laughs> and it probably is. And you know, Instagram gives me a familiar feeling, but Instagram for me, I've, like I said, I've always loved photography and that was my initial re reason for joining Instagram. And I joined Instagram at the very beginning of Instagram actually, back in 2012, because back then it was a way for photographers and uh, people who are creative in terms of visual images and visual media to share their work and get recognition. And it was also a sort of very artsy, you know, very, <laughs> hipstery way for people to put together a scrapbook online, right? And share images of their lives. That was the initial premise of Instagram. Oh, how things have changed. But I realized that my lack of creativity largely stemmed from how much time I spend online on social media, how distracted I am by it, and how much it doesn't really feed my soul in a positive way how much these curated uh, images of people's perfect 
seemingly perfect lives, perfect outfits, everything saturated and, and edited to perfection, angles are perfect, hair, makeup, you know, everything portrayed on Instagram is sort of this glossed over fake reality that isn't real. We all know this, but we're all still addicted. And, you know, as they've upped their their advances in, in terms of getting us to engage with comments and liking comments and disliking comments and all these things that they've added to keep us more just sucked in and engaged with the platform have actually been detrimental to my mental health. And I feel as though a lot of you guys could probably relate. So I do take frequent breaks from social media. I remember two summers ago, I was off of all social media, I deleted all my social media for about a month and it was amazing. I had such a great spiritual awakening. I actually vlogged my entire experience, but I've been very nervous to put that online so I just never posted it. But it was an amazing experience. I had such a spiritual, mental and emotional awakening, cleansing, just it was great. And when I came back to social media, because we always come back, I noticed that I was scrolling less and spending less time on it, but you know, that was two summers ago and I'm completely back to my old habits of like scrolling mindlessly, taking in and consuming these, these images and this media that's really not healthy for me. And that is also so time consuming and so distracting that it's literally sucking out my will to create. It's kind of dulling me and sort of, um, desensitizing me to reality it's a very subconscious thing where you have this constant buzzing going on at all times and you know how attached we are to our phones and how they're close to it all, us at all times when was the last time you turned off your phone for a night when was the last time you turned off your phone for a day I remember back when I got my first cell phone at 18 in high school it was a flip phone and I would go hours. I didn't know where my phone was. It was usually the back of my purse or somewhere. I, I only used it when I went out. It was off a lot. And yes, there wasn't social media to keep us so attached to our phones. You know, I use my phone to call people, to text when texting became a thing, and to play games. My favorite phone was the Blackberry. Y'all Blackberry heads know. That phone was amazing. I freaking loved that phone. RIP to the Blackberry. They're still out there, but it's, it's just not the same. But anyways, back on, on topic, this video is going to be so long. I'm so sorry, you guys. I have to get this off my chest, though. So back on topic, my solution for me personally is going to be a social media free year or at least a social media limited year. I've downloaded these apps to help me schedule my postings on Instagram because I'm not going to abandon my Instagram platform, especially my bookstagram. Especially now as I'm, you know, really starting to branch out and work with publishers and I enjoy that. I really do. I enjoy working with publishers. As long as I'm able to do it ethically and my morals and values are not being put at risk, then yeah, I enjoy it. Who wouldn't? So I, you know, in order to do that, you have to be a, uh, have a social media presence and you kind of have to keep it up. So I've downloaded these apps to help me schedule out posts where I don't even have to go to Instagram to post anything. And... I'm really taking a deep dive into my own real life, right? Reality, being more present, being more conscious, having a clearer mind, being less distracted, and really feel, feeding, not feeling, feeding my well of creativity in order to truly feel and out of our feelings comes art. Out of our feelings comes the things that we make, whether it be writing a story or, you know, painting something, photography, music, you know, dancing. There's so many different ways that the human mind has chosen to kind of show off feelings and thoughts and ideas. And it's our ideas put into action, put into art, put into motion that change the world. And I feel as though a lot of us have become complacent you know, have become lazy, have become distracted by social media and by just other things put in place to sort of divert our attention. Now, coming back full circle to my presence on booktube, I have noticed that my videos don't get the views that they used to. And it's truly due to my lack of consistency. I take a lot of breaks. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I realized that my reason for booktubing was never to be 
a big booktuber or famous or anything like that I joined this community because I wanted to give back and give somebody else the feeling that he had given me when I so desperately needed it at that time in my life and obviously I wanted to engage and have a dialogue and just be a part of something that just felt like home you know throughout my entire life throughout every, anything I've ever gone through breakups with friends with men um, relationships with friends with men family drama um, identity crises spiritual crises anything I've ever gone through in my life depression anxiety I've always had reading I can feel myself get emotional I've always had reading I've always had books to turn to in the darkest moments of my life I've always had stories you know and that's why I have so much respect for authors and that I'm why I so desperately you know hope to be a part of the the rank of a published author because of what authors have given me what stories have given me right what imagination their creativity and their imagination what's given to me in some of the darkest times in my life some of the happiest times in my life some of the most boring times in my life i've always had reading you know i've always had the story the written word words mean so much to me and not just because i write them but because of what they fed my soul with what they've given me and I don't want to abandon that and that's why I started this channel well I started this channel yeah yeah NaNoWriMo but you know that's why I've stayed and okay I could be more consistent and honestly I can't promise you guys anything because <laughs> my mental health has to come first y'all it does self-care but really digging deep and finding the reasons for why I joined booktube has reinvigorated my desire to be on this platform because for a long time for years now I've really questioned my place here I've questioned you know my direction that's why my presence has been so sporadic also mental health issues that I struggle with I'm not the type of person that can just put on a smile and put on a happy face when I'm having anxiety when I'm depressed when I can barely get out of bed when I can just get to work and get home because your girl got bills. I got two dogs to support. And then to turn on the camera and smile and be cheerful and do a book review is just not something I can do to do a book haul. And it's not something I'm capable of. Some people use it as a coping mechanism. I can't. I just, I can't do it. So more power to you guys who are able to do that, but I, it's not in me. You know, whenever I make videos, it has to come from a place of peace. It may not come from a place of happiness and joy and everything's going well in life but I have to be at peace on some level my mind has to be clear so that's where the sporadicness of my posting schedule comes from and my inconsistency and what seems like my lack of direction because I really enjoy discussion videos I hate making TBR videos because I'm every time it's it, honestly TBRs take me back to school when they give you a required reading list and it automatically just made you not want to read those books. I can't do it. Even if it's not another authority figure giving me a list, I'm giving myself a list. <laughs> and you would think that would be better, but it's really not. I hate making wrap ups. I don't know why, guys. I really don't. I don't enjoy it. It seems so just monotonous just sitting here and holding a book after book after book and rambling on and saying, oh, this was about this and this. I did them at the beginning because it's just what you did you know tbrs wrap-ups hauls and I've, I've discussed this before on this channel and other videos but i don't enjoy making wrap-ups i don't they're long oh my gosh you guys they take so long to film and edit and i just i don't like them i don't like doing the typical videos i do enjoy hauls <laughs> so i'll probably bring those back so for those y'all that missed my hauls they're coming back in 2020. i got three new bookshelves oh girl Three new bookshelves to fill. So here we go. <laughs> I do enjoy filming hauls. Um, I do re enjoy filming reading vlogs. They never make it up <laughs> to being posted. Gotta work on that. But yeah, it's really made me reevaluate my place and space here and realizing how much I do get out of it. And it's reignited my passion to be more creative. I have so many ideas that I never execute out of being distracted right out of laziness 
and my will and desire to be creative being completely sucked away, me being distracted by social media, me being a procrastinist, procrastinist? Whoa, did I just make up a word? Me procrastinating <laughs> and fear, fear of rejection, fear of it not being received well. Fear, fear, fear. It always comes back to fear with me. I really need to get back in therapy. Anyways, I say all that to say three things. One, I'm really excited about 2020. I'm not going to make any promises because I've done that in the past and I've failed and I haven't followed through. So I'm not going to say anything vocally or out loud. I'll just say creatively, I'm really excited for 2020. Two, I'm having a mostly offline year. I'm really excited to be present in the real world, <laughs> to be less distracted and to consume less curated media that's slowly warping my mind and chipping away at my self-esteem and detrimental to my mental health. And finally, three, this is for you. Thank you so much for sitting here, listening to me ramble, going through a freaking existential crisis literally on camera. This part is for you. Don't give up. I don't care what you do. You may not be a content creator online. You may not be a booktuber, bookstagrammer, YouTuber, fill in the blank. Don't give up. Whatever it is that you're doing, again, I'm not going to even try to you know, hypothesize your passions. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Do not give up. Keep going. Make sure that your well of creativity is not running dry, that it's full, that it has somewhere to draw from. Make sure that you're able to engage with what ignites your fire, what ignites your passion, that you're able to engage healthily with the things that inspire you, that spark your imagination, right? Keep yourself occupied with the things that bring you joy. You know, if you enjoy making things, continue to make, continue to create, even if it's not for consumption. We leave, we leave, whoo, I'm in the middle of a deep thought and count on me to mess that up. We live in such a capitalist society where everything we produce is looked at as a product, right? That has a price tag on it. Look at this whole discussion online on book Twitter about subscriber count. What it really is, is you're attaching your value to a number, okay? Yes, I'm talking to you if you're watching this video. You are attaching your value to a number. You are looking at someone else, another content creator or content creators and coveting what they have and either subconsciously feeling like you deserve more because you think you're valued at a higher number. Do you, you see how absurd this, abs, ab, absurd this is? Do you see how damaging and toxic this mentality is? You attaching your value, your worth as a creator, as an artist, as someone who has ideas and imagination to a number and looking at someone else, looking outside of yourself in order to self-flagellate and, you know, have a pity party and wallow and wonder why not me and why her or why him or why them. It's not okay, it's not okay. And you have to really unpack that and really go dive deep and, one, and not just wonder, but really start to figure out and do the inner work of why you are doing that and why your mind is taking all those mental gymnastics. And if you need to check, check out, <laughs> don't check out, if you need to log off, please do. I should put that on a shirt. If you need to log off, please do. But don't give up. Don't attach your worth to a number. You are not a product. You are a person, you are a human being with thoughts and feelings and ideas and you are able to make something that is going to change someone's life. Maybe not the world as at large, but you can cause a ripple effect, a ripple effect that can effect, uh, impact someone in a positive way. Make someone's day. You are not a product. I will say that again. You are not a product. But the capitalist society that we live in puts a price tag on everything that we make, everything that we create. It teaches us, it warps our minds to look at the things that we make as products and, you know, to value them based on 
algorithms, engagement, subscriber count, <laughs> whether we're making money doing it or not, how much money we're making, it never ends. So I encourage you and urge you not to give up, not to place your value in such a su superficial system and instead value yourself based on your cre your creativity and how much you're you're willing to and able to truly invest yourself in the things that you're passionate about and the things that give you joy and ignite you and three it's not too late it's not too late for you it's not too late it's not too late to change it's not too late to change paths to change direction it's not too late to start it's not too late to go back and begin again. It's not too late. It's not too late. Well, that's it for this video. Mm, I've consumed entirely too much ice cream and I'm gonna edit this and get this up for you guys tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm still gonna be here. I'm excited for 2020. And whoever makes it to end this video, thank you. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.